And welcome to another cast done by Diggity on behalf of StarCast TV. 12 o'clock location, we have Royal starting as the blue Terran, bottom right in corner. We have Rush starting as the brown Terran. This is going to be on Ascension. And you got two top level Terran in a close to ASL champion and an ASL champion. Should be a good one overall. I don't know who to give the edge to. Rush is very strong TVT. Royal, very strong TVT as well. I want to give the macro edge overall to Royal and the early game micro edge to Rush, I think, is the way I'll play it. Rush oftentimes lives up to his name and will open with aggressive factory play. His positional control after that tends to be phenomenal. Royal just, on occasion, that's not to say he doesn't always play this way. I mean, he won a championship. It's just, uh, there's something about Royal where on occasion when he gets that brain lock in in TVT, he just play, he just, his position, he just makes his opponents look silly. Just his mind reading them and ahead, especially from the late mid game on, sometimes he can just be unstoppable. So we'll see if Rush tries to get an indomitable lead before then, or maybe wants to take the fight to Royal early so that it doesn't end up towards those situations. I will say in other matchups like versus Protoss, the other, it's entertaining to watch Royal because he'll go for those aggressive openers and then just follow it up with brutal smothering macro. But in TVT, usually it's like that slow and steady and then just being everywhere his opponent isn't and just finding the holes. I don't know if it's just Comsat or just the mind reading or just all of the above, but just seems to find ways to carve out his opponent and keep them on their heels constantly. Both, this is interesting play here. Both players, not just one, but both gonna go for the early command center on a three player map. So this is definitely, usually this is a little bit risky and uh, cheesy style play. This wasn't Rax into expand. This wasn't Rax gas into expand. This was just straight command center from both players. And I find it amusing that both players opting for it. So we have the barracks placement and actually we'll see how this plays out. So the barracks a little bit more favorably positioned for Rush to move towards Royal's base. Royal wants it on the forward edge for that blockade, but down the line when he lifts it off, it it'll be would be more favorable to a bottom left location than upper right. I don't, know, I don't think that's gonna be that massive a factor here given the earlier expand, but I'm wondering if they're both going to kind of laugh here. SCV scout mid-map for both players. So they know positioning based on the movement of the SCV. But now, yeah, Royal looks like he's going to see it first. Royal actually moving up to blockade that SCV a little bit, but they got to be snickering at this stage. So gas. Now up. Royal with the one SCV lead barely. Looks like for whatever reason, maybe, uh, yeah, fact, ooh, actually had a return mineral right there on that SCV on the forward location, but the SCV going to return home for both players, and we'll see what the follow-up is either side. I do feel like vultures are so strong on this map just because of its size. That being said, going for early siege tank does open up or basically a counter vulture build does open up potentially playing a more tight territorial control game and moving up and for from Russia's position grabbing that three o'clock a little bit earlier and from Royal's position grabbing that top left hand expansion a little bit earlier potentially. Two factories immediately being built for both players. Two Marines moving out for Royal though. You got three, kind of a risky play. Third Marine also marching its way out. Just checking mid map it looks like. The barracks has lifted off the float forward, so that will be it for the marine count. Royal hugging that corner. I wonder if he's trying to draw those SCV out of, or sorry, draw those marines out of position. Potentially. It looks like the marine's going to return to home base upon looking at that forward marine count. I think he was just seeing if the marine count was skimped to get earlier factory. If, and if it was, he maybe wanted to dive those marines into the natural expansion get a couple SCV kills to equalize things. Third factory and machine shop being constructed. Same thing opposite end. So we were basically seeing dead on mirrored builds both directions. Fourth factory on both sides as well. SV taking a little bit of hit and this and it looks like the barracks can be a little and this might actually end up being the the sizable advantage now is just having that barracks in a forward spotting position earlier. 
Rush looks like he's going to be able to float that factory much more rapidly into his opponent's space to get a good look at the factory count and also the, be able to spot that machine shop. First Vulture out trying to hunt down that SCV in forward field. Able to get that kill. Two Vultures making their way out for Rush as well. But yeah, this is going to be the critical bit. And the Marines pushing forward. They're not going to be able to stop that barracks from seeing that machine shop spinning on that edge. We'll see if it goes deep enough to... I do love the positioning of the factories more towards the north. But Rush likes what he sees. Going to pull back out. Two vultures, fairly deep. Going to be outnumbered here. And now having to flee for their lives. Are they going to be able to regather and turn this around, though? Royal regrouping. So, slight advantage for Royal. One SCV lead overall. And now, it, yeah, it's going to come down to an interesting micro battle. Because we have... I don't see any deviation in play. The only difference here is this barracks got a little bit further forward and got a good look at that factory count. This barracks, having to hover out, is going to be able to look at the army count and should have a good idea of the factory build as a result of being able to see how many vultures are sneaking out. And also, if it can float over this gap, we'll know when they're basically a, a generalized direction. The barracks actually burning for rush, so that could delay additional construction and we do see another factory being plopped down to grow the count to five opposite end maybe as a result of that barracks burning down recognizing he wouldn't be able to build one down the line but in the meantime royal still has not grabbed his natural expansion gas neither is rush it's just pure vulture and marine out on the front no marine supporting i don't know that that's going to be that huge a deal i mean it's a small little bit of dps but neither player has massive amounts of information. The Marines blockading the barracks out opposite side. Supply count slightly in Royal's favor. SCV count slightly in Royal's favor. And now mines being dropped a little bit deeper here. And, that, and the same thing opposite side, it looks like, from Rush. Just to try to get eyes. And Rush sneaking in. Leaning across at the gap. Able to drop one mine in position. A little bit of a skirmish here. I don't know that either player wants to engage right at this position, but having these mines a little bit deeper at this location will be pretty nice for us. Yeah, he's getting some good mine coverage now. And so should be able to see, and this is ascension for you, is like vulture versus vulture all day. Rush with that fifth factory pumping out vultures, ending up with the lead. The Marines getting splatted. A siege tank not fully covering that gap and mines laid either direction so it's been wiped out and it looks like rush is just going to swarm and try to mic uh, micro his way through this at a closer reinforcement point more vultures peeling up and we'll see once the dust settles who ends up with the superior or whether it's just going to be a total army reset both directions but keep in mind there's that additional factory that was down for rush overall but Royal, with the closer reinforcement... Oops, that was not what I wanted to do right there. There we go. For a moment, going to old school graphics. And Royal, having won that battle, going to go ahead and grab a third. Rush, potentially feeling like there isn't enough... And he also had... I mean, look at the mine curvage as well. Is going to go ahead and grab his 3 o'clock. So both players doing a reset. Two additional... I missed this. Some Wraith being... So rather than additional factory, you got a Wraith at the natural. Gonna go ahead and micro and abuse those Marines along that SCV line where they're gonna have trouble getting through there. Did they manage to get a kill? Three, three Wraith now. That should be more than sufficient to wipe out those Marines. And they're gonna go ahead and dive in and scout. They're gonna see the three machine shops. And just, ooh, gonna be able to delay that factory as well. And that could be critical. Vultures diving in, able to kill the SCV that was constructing that third base. That is going to do be an economic slowdown opposite corner. Siege tanks piling in to go ahead and end that attack. I think the better part of this is going to be on Royal's side. Especially if he can keep this army down as long as possible, because the more he delays is if he's got his own plus one weapons rolling. That can be a, a sizable power boost. And Royal now creeping ahead, six SCVs. Has that base established. It looks like that 3 o'clock is being untouched, however. 
and SCVs, and this is a lot of last mining time, all these SCVs piling off to make sure that armory gets constructed. And it's kind of playing a whack-a-mole game. But that's a lot of SCVs sacrificed behind all of this. A dropship being constructed to follow. It looks like that army, ooh, a little bit later on Royal side, I actually thought he already had that armory down. Not that it matters because, oof, these Wraith have been uncontested this entire time. While this armory was being delayed, that was a delay on the Goliaths being fielded. So another aspect of that. Actually, the more important aspect, I should say. Royal and firm control now. 30 supply leads starting to push mid-map. The Wraith joining the fray. Gonna pick at the siege tanks. More siege tanks on Rush's side, but again, there's nothing stopping the Wraith from just wiping them out. And so this could turn into an early GG. Rush now down 20 supply. Goliath being pushed back. Yeah, so five siege tanks versus two. They are gonna halt there at the very least. Guess Royal really likes the Wraith continuing with attacking on some additional factories as well. Nice blockade. Yeah, he might even be able to take this fourth at the nine o'clock location right this second. Because this is a big supply lead. And I'm waiting. Mean, he had that dropship out. Yeah, he's got two siege tanks in the Vulture. Moving forward field. The follow-up constructed barracks. Going to float. Might be able to get something done right there. Vultures are going to be able to wipe out that SCV before it's able to construct something at the 9 o'clock. But I don't think that dropship has been spotted this entire time. The Vulture's sneaking in. Might equalize things. I'm actually shocked that the SCV count, after all of the damage that Wraith did, that the SCV count's as close as it is. However, still a massive supply lead for Royal overall. Mine being cleared to open up that fourth and Siege Tank and Vulture drop now in striking distance of the SCVs. And Rush pulling all of the SCVs off the line. Siege Tank's moving in to try to defend this. But keep in mind that Goliath has to get into forward position because otherwise, yeah, those Vultures can just really be scooped right back up and out of Siege Tank range. Also a... Vulture Task Force making its way to the north to go ahead and deny any additional potential base there. SCV's bleeding now at the natural expansion. Rush having trouble economically catching up. That fourth well underway. Halfway finished. He's still locked at three bases and down 30 supply overall. A mine actually getting planted in enemy lines. Looks like it's going to be quickly wiped out. And I think the Vultures that were top right missed them cycling down, I think, to the 3 o'clock location. Royal, looking in firm control, single siege tank to the north, is going to be evicted. Does have some vulture backup since Goliath's right there, but yeah, it's quickly wiped out. Cloaked Wraith moving to the mid position, going to wipe out that Goliath while the commsats were not in reaction time. So now, yeah, a commsat being dropped, but no Goliath there, providing defense. Royal backing off, actually, with that commsat was a little bit concerned. Rush going to try to grab an expansion. The Wraith... Just going to go ahead and free assault these siege tanks now. Finally, three Goliaths able to engage. Spotted that that base has, in fact, both been established and is starting to mine, and now going to again feast on SCVs. This has just been the story this entire time. Some vultures able to get into that 9 o'clock base to cause some disruption. The Wraith continuing to create some harassment. Going to pick off some additional siege tanks that were just sitting there back in the rear before they're exiting. I think the Wraith have basically paid for themselves and the siege tanks that they've wiped out thus far. So we got four bases versus a soon-to-be four, 11 SCV lead for Royal overall, and a huge 40 supply lead behind that. Rush has a nice defensive line, though. Royal testing the dead middle of it. Wraith punching at the siege tanks from the lower corner. Looks like the Goliaths are going to be able to intercept and engage that, but not before Royal is able to envelop the rest of these attack forces from the north. And Rush is 
supply count is not looking favorable. And Royal, with this, also taking mid-map position, is within striking distance of this interior 3 o'clock base. Some vultures trying to stream across to force some troops back. There is a single siege tank here to the north. But I don't know that that's going to be sufficient against these three vultures. Getting a couple SCV kills and a siege tank kill there, but that's mostly an annoyance more than anything for Royal. You can just send out a couple troops to deal with it, although the, that is evening up the SCV count overall. But Siege Tank's now moving to the north. Or I should say moving to the high ground above Russia's interior third. And pelting troops from there. Barracks being cancelled. Some Goliaths trying to absorb some initial shots so the Siege Tanks can get established underneath. But if they get expended, the Wraith are right there to punish what remains. Desperation Missile Turret being built. And with this, Royal is basically... So Rush going to try to maybe get that upper right-hand base, but Royal is boxed Rush in to everything bottom right. And it's just getting worse. Continues to maintain that 40 supply lead. More siege tanks barreling in, and he doesn't really need to push much further. He just needs to hold this line because that's going to allow Rush to hold those four bases but not be able to get anything further. And beyond that, Rush is effectively going to have to either walk uphill through the dark or through a narrow chasm to engage any of Royal's troops. Continuing to harass the high ground. More troops starting to cycle out. And yeah, from here, Royal can just, at his leisure, take additional expansions and continue to allow these Wraith to just spot the high ground and just use that misfire rate. And air abuse. Looks like he's going to go ahead and wipe that refinery down to nice some gas. Critical to keep that everything mech running. So Royal about 30 supply away from 200. Rush still is yet to breach 150. Trying to build a command center top right. I think Royal might just give that to him because, again, not much of a threat. And at this stage, just has to reinforce and make sure that there isn't a push through the center line at any location. He can just start grabbing everything else. Looks like he's already setting up to do so. Rush going for a counter push across the middle. Reinforcements are here. To plug that gap, the vultures surging forward, tanks sieging behind this. A science vessel engaging as well to deal with the wraith cloak so he doesn't have to keep dropping comps at to spot those wraith. But just expending even more troops, now that, su that supply gap has opened up to 70. And Rush going to call GG right there. Yeah, he's completely boxed into the bottom right. Royal just had complete map control. Well played by Royal. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give a like and subscribe. Thank you for listening.